Jeff Green was waived by the Utah Jazz on December 24th, 2019. Now, it's quite possible he could be back and maybe another team will take a chance on him. But regardless, it's safe to say that his career will be coming to an end in the near future. Jeff Green's NBA journey is one of turbulence, instability, a career filled with just as many pleasant surprises as disappointments. Since getting drafted in 2007, he's played for eight different teams. However, it was only recently that he became a journeyman. From 2015 to the end of 2019, he played for six different teams and up until his release, he was still getting significant playing time about 18 minutes per game for the Utah Jazz. And on previous teams, he would play upwards of 20 minutes, 25 minutes a game off the bench. Known to be one of the most inconsistent players of all time, Green would have games where he'd score like 5 points, and then explode for 30 points the next night. And then the night after that, he'd go back down to scoring 5 points again. In fact, you could see this happen multiple times during the 2013-14 season, the season where Green had his highest scoring average of his NBA career. If you check his game logs, they look pretty crazy. 2 points, 4 points, and then followed by 19 points and 20 points in consecutive games. He'd have a 30 point game and then score 8 points for the next 2 games. Sometimes, he looked like a superstar, scoring over 30 points on ridiculous efficiency. But then, he'd follow that up by going 2 for 13 or 2 for 12 a few days later. If you look through all of his other seasons, you'd see pretty much the same thing. No matter what team he's on, no matter if he's starting or coming off the bench, no matter how young or how old he is, Jeff Green has always been this way. Anyway, how's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Jeff Green. In the 2007 NBA Draft, Green was drafted by the Boston Celtics with the 5th overall pick, after a successful career at Georgetown. Shortly after he got drafted, he was packaged in part of that huge trade that sent Ray Allen to Boston. Green would be headed to Seattle, and it was a much better spot for him. The Seattle Supersonics were going into a full rebuild, and now they managed to add Jeff Green on top of already drafting Kevin Durant with the second pick. That's a nice core they've got so far, and in a scouting report, Green was compared to Lamar Odom. He was described as a, quote, versatile player whose all-around ability creates mismatches for opposing teams. Above average passer with great court vision to recognize open teammates, very good ball handler for his size, defensively Green does an excellent job defending players on the perimeter. With his size and length, he is capable of guarding a multitude of positions on the floor, unselfish player almost to a fault, shows a good post-up game that Green uses to take advantage of smaller defenders, sees double teams extremely well, excellent finisher around the basket with a soft touch and springy legs, smart player who possesses a high basketball IQ. Literally, the entire report just goes on and on about how great Jeff Green is going to be. From reading all of this, you'd think that he'd be the next Michael Jordan or something. He got so much praise, it was ridiculous. But in reality, he would look like this for maybe 10 games per season. For the other 70 games, he would just look like a normal role player who doesn't do too much. Anyway, his rookie season turned out to be decent for him individually, but the team was a catastrophe, finishing with just 20 wins. What's even worse is that the Seattle Supersonics were already in the beginning stages of getting relocated. After Clay Bennett purchased the team in 2006, there were immediately rumors that he had plans to relocate the Sonics to Oklahoma City. But nobody was sure if that was actually going to happen, or if he even had the rights to do so. However, at the start of the 2007-8 season, Bennett made it public that he would move the team to OKC at the beginning of the next season. As a result, Green's entire rookie year was overshadowed by the impending demise of Seattle losing their team. Well, that and he was overshadowed by Kevin Durant, of course, who won the Rookie of the Year. Green himself averaged about 10 points a game and slowly worked his way into the starting lineup. Then, in the summer of 2008, the relocation process would be complete. 
Additionally, the team also drafted two more key players who would become cornerstones to the franchise, Russell Westbrook and Serge Ibaka. Another year later, they would pick up James Harden. This three-year drafting stretch from 2007 to 2009 is widely regarded to be the greatest string of draft selections we've ever seen in three years. It resulted in three future superstars, future perennial all-stars, future MVPs. Unfortunately, Jeff Green gets lost in all of this. Despite his improvements and raising his scoring to over 16 points a game, he was already quite overshadowed. He was slowly but surely getting more and more overshadowed by his own teammates. In fact, by 2011, a trade that sent him to Boston in exchange for Kendrick Perkins became the key move that pushed the Thunder into contention. While Green was absolutely a solid, versatile player, there were just way too many ball-dominant players on the team. Players who were simply better with the ball than Green was. His skill set overlapped with basically everybody on the team, so there were some diminishing returns. He'd have a great game now and then, but overall, he wasn't getting the best chance to show his skills on the Thunder. The general opinion was that Green was a more skilled and more talented player than Kendrick Perkins. So when Sam Presti made this trade, there were some, well fans usually were not against it, but it was kind of confusing. They did need a center, but trading away their 24 year old 5th overall pick for Kendrick Perkins? It did not seem too exciting. However, Perkins was always a tough, gritty center who had the reputation for being a defensive stud back in Boston. Some even say that if he did not get injured in the 2010 NBA Finals, the Celtics might have won Game 7 and the championship. Regardless, the Thunder were a very inexperienced young team who needed the leadership and toughness that Perkins provided. Years later, he would be a mentor for Steven Adams, and pass on his style of play to him. He was the final piece that turned OKC into a championship contender. Unfortunately, following the trade to Boston, Green would be diagnosed with an aortic aneurysm, which required heart surgery. As a result, he would sit out the entire 2011-12 season. This was a huge turning point in his career because it was a serious, life-threatening issue. At just 25 years old, Green feared that he could never return back to the NBA court. That was a scary thought. Dr. Svensson was in charge of the surgery, and the first time he glanced at the x-ray, he was absolutely shocked. Svensson stated, quote, Green's aorta, the main blood vessel in the body, is paper thin. It is on the verge of rupturing. I was so grateful that we got to him in time before he had a major disaster. Green himself had no idea that this issue even existed until Boston's medical staff found out. When asked about his recovery, he said, To me, basketball is secondary. I had to really fight for my life. I almost died over this game. At this point, there were a lot of questions surrounding Jeff Green. It's now the summer of 2012 and the Celtics decided to keep him, re-signing him to a four-year, $36 million deal. He would remain in Boston until 2015, and during this time period, Boston was in a transition period, moving away from the Big Three, and into an era of rebuilding. Just like back in OKC, Green continued to play well, averaging double digits in points. Sometimes, he would completely take over a game out of nowhere and other times, he would disappear and everyone would forget he's even playing. While he did have a great four years in Boston, it was definitely a strange period of time for the team. They were seeing what players were good enough to keep for the future, and Green was just too inconsistent, despite having some ridiculous moments. Perhaps he still exceeded his initial expectations because it's fantastic he's able to play again following a heart procedure. But on the floor, his inconsistency became so well known that fans would routinely call him out for it. One of the best quotes from the 2013-14 season was by Dan Feldman of NBC Sports. He summarized Green's inconsistency by saying this, Jeff Green scored 39 points Sunday, making him one of just 9 players to score that much multiple times this season. 
The other eight: Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, Kevin Love, James Harden, Steph Curry, and Blake Griffin were all stars. But in the game before his most recent 39-point outing, Green did something none of those eight did: score single digits. And in the game after his most recent 39-point outing, Green did something none of those eight did: score single digits. Following his tenure in Boston, he would become a journeyman. From team to team, he would have different roles and different amounts of playing time, but he would still do his thing. When he's good, he looks unstoppable, like LeBron James with Kevin Durant's jump shots. When he's bad, nobody even notices because people are not paying attention to him. Everyone got used to it. From Memphis to Los Angeles to Orlando, Cleveland, Washington D.C., Utah. It's always been the same. He'd have numerous 20 or 30 point games every season, but then he'd also have just as many 5 point games. But perhaps maybe that's a good thing sometimes. When a team signs Jeff Green, they know what they're getting—a guy who can take over a game a few times a season. But he'll never get the blame if his team loses. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. That sounds like a great deal to me. Anyway, that's all, folks. Let me know your thoughts on Jeff Green. And do you think his career is coming to an end? As of this video, he's 33 years old and has held on for a long time. But maybe he can keep it going even further. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.